Hello, my name is Ram Banerjee from a company called Transaxium and we deal with digital cash. People always ask me, why? Why digital cash? Isn't that something that we tried in the mid-90s and it didn't work? And they'll be right. In the mid-90s there was a huge plethora of devices that were trying to do electronic money using smart cards, contact and contactless smart cards. Visa itself had seven different types of platforms, all of them interoperable, or not. Um, so nobody really got it right. The biggest trial, I guess, was won by Mondex in Swindon and other places, and that never really got anywhere. So why bring up digital cash now? Really. 20 years later, you could say it's a problem that we need to solve because digital cash is needed more than ever. Why? Mainly because the majority, and this is amazing, the majority of the world is unbanked. And we often sit here in the West and say, so what? Well, the so what means that we're ignoring between 35 and 40 percent of the Western world population. There's 50 million people in the United States alone that are either unbanked or poorly banked which means that they really don't have much in the way of banking services. And why is that important? Because banking services provides you with a payment mechanism other than physical cash. It provides you with all the remote payment mechanisms such as uh, debit cards, credit cards, checks and so forth. So the majority of the world is cash only. And cash only means that they are into face-to-face -face transactions. And they're never going to get to a position where they can find buyers further away that will take value, a greater value from their goods. They can't find sources of goods further away to be able to buy to make a greater return. So is physical cash that keeps the cash users poor. If we want their lot to improve, then we have to provide a digital cash mechanism. Much of the success of the West has been as a result of electronic commerce. But there is no e-commerce without e-money. And therefore, we need to provide an e-money mechanism so that somebody can go and buy a USB cable on Amazon for 99 pence delivered instead of having to get on a bus, go to a shop and buy it for 9.99 elsewhere. We want somebody poor to be able to buy a plane ticket online in very much the same way as other people. The majority of the planet are connected. They're connected because they're mobile phone users. So they do have mobile phones it's just that they're physically cash limited and you can't screw down the cash tight enough to send it down wires. Unless we can get that majority of the planet coming up and wanting e-commerce services, we as a planet don't thrive. We need those consumers just as they need financial products for the betterment of all. As they say, a rising tide lifts all boats. But there's another reason for digital cash. Whereas we've got away from very small value goods, some you could say sweets and newspapers still require very small items, there are a whole host of things that still require repetitive small value. And main ones among them are things like transit, which is a physical face-to-face -face transaction. And then there's virtual ones, 
such as games, such as video, music, information. It's the internet that's created a demand for pay-as-you-go consumption of virtual content. And at the moment, this is done very badly with the only remote pe mechanism we have for payment, which is debit and credit cards. So it does it very badly with them. Digital cash is needed because if I want to buy an article from The Economist, which is only for 20 pence, then I want to be able to spend 20 pence with them rather than having to deposit 10 pounds with them and then wait to spend the £9.80 on other services. So I want a mechanism of digital cash payment on the web. And that's what Transaxium does. We do digital cash. How do we do it? We build the infrastructure required for digital cash. And digital cash effectively means that a user who has value can transfer that value to a merchant. That merchant can then accumulate that value and redeem it with the issuer of that money. And it is the issuer that loaded the value to the user in the first place. So, Transaxium builds user systems in the form of secure smart cards so we can load value onto these cards. It builds merchant terminals in the form of applications on phones and it builds an issuer hosting system in the cloud. And the issuer then connects to the rest of the banking world. We do all of that as a supplier of technology and our customers take it over from that. And you'll say, well, isn't that what Oyster is? We have Transport for London has a system called Oyster for transit ticketing. You get an Oyster card with value on it, in this case pounds, and the merchant is effectively the gate at the underground station or the bus. Yes. And there are such systems in their millions around the world. The problem is, with such systems, every merchant device requires a security module called a SAM. Secure application module. It's a security device that's sitting within the merchant device, whether it's a gate or a terminal or whatever, that collects the electronic value from the end user. That is what stops these systems from becoming interoperable. If London Transport wanted Oyster to be freely available to taxis and kiosks for, for suites and newspapers or for parking, one of their SAMs would have to sit, this is an electronic device very much like a SIM card, a mini SIM card, would have to sit inside every merchant terminal and those would have to be managed. It's an enormous security headache. What we've done within Transaxium is that we've eliminated the SAM. We've taken away the security requirement of the merchant terminal yet still be able to take a transfer of value from the user to the merchant offline, not been possible before without a SAM, to do it fast, below 300 milliseconds, not been possible before without a SAM, and to do it securely so that the merchant is not able to defraud the system by saying he's collected more value than he actually has. We build the entire system so that this merchant terminal can be any computing device that connects to a user. It could be a Wi-Fi box that's giving you megabytes of data per pence. It could be a vending machine. 
It could be a set-top box that allows you to pay-per-view. We have provided a digital cash system so that this can work locally using the card or through your phone the merchant can actually be on a website. So finally you can pay 20 pence to get your Economist article. How does the system work? I like to say magic but clearly you're not going to believe that. So how this value transfer system works without a SAB is the subject of our next video. Thanks for watching.